If an officer is going to be a detective, he should be given thorough training on various ways of detection of crime. After his decoration as the 20th Inspector General of Police, IGP Adamu left many Nigerians with little doubt as to what to expect. We inherited insecurity where kidnappers, bandits were operating so much. We had um, one ethnic group against the other in the northwestern part of this country, Zamfara in particular, Katsina, Binungwari, part of Kaduna State, some part of Niger State also. So that led us to re-strategizing, identifying those that are within the force, those that are operationally sound and capable of keying into the strategy we put in place and then working with the the political class in northwestern part of the country he came in at a very trying moment in uh, nigeria because it's a, an era where there are a lot of issues on banditry issues on kidnapping issues on armed robbery along the highways issues of ethnic clashes and then the biggest of them issues of the Boko Haram that had been taking place. Indeed, the vision and modus operandi of the IGP was manifestly decisive from the onset and his singular objective according to him was to to see that every Nigerian sleeps with his or her eyes closed. We want to see to it that banditry is gone Kidnapping is gone, cultism is gone, armed robbery is gone. In all those, uh, uh, those areas that I mentioned, each will have strategies on how to work with the community to stop them. So our objective is that from now onward, we should be assessed by ability to bring down these different crime areas. As the police chief settles into his new portfolio, the general elections concluded, the attention of Nigeria and the world at large shifted to other areas of concern. One of these was the perceived menace of the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS. In reality, the incidents of indiscipline by a few members of the squad drew severe negative attention and brought about mistrust and a decline of confidence by the public, the media, and the human rights community. Unfortunately, the entire force was criticized and called out in public demonstrations which demanded the disbandment of SARS. IGP Adamu's solution meant that the problem of perceived high-handedness and human rights violations was resolved without having to disband SARS. Well, the issue of SARS was very simple. Um, I think the, the challenge then was that a special anti-robbery squad was centralized, being controlled from Force Headquarters Abuja, and that generated a lot of challenges with the citizens. But when we came on board, we knew that um, localizing SARS would be more effective and beneficial in fighting crime than centralizing it. So we decentralize it and ask the commissioners of police to be in charge within their own localities. And I think that has paid off because uh, there are less complaints about the excesses of SARS now. SARS was an interesting issue. SARS is an old case. When SARS was created, there was urgent need for SARS to be created. 
Science has dealt with that situation, and certain laws have been enacted on human rights, fundamental rights. You see, what they needed to was the reorientation, continuous reorientation and rejigging and refocusing until he came in. When he came in, he decided to send SARS simply to school. Let them understand why SARS is established. What are the parameters of the establishment? What the constitution says they should do? What the African Charter says they should do? It quite at all this is. You know, before the IG came, the operations of the Special anti robbery Squad were centralized. And that did not give room for effective command and control of the squad. Because all the squads all over the country were brought under the control of the force headquarters. So the first thing that was done was to decentralize the command and control of the SARS, of the Special anti robbery Squad. You will observe that most of the complaints we had before the IG came were as a result of misuse of firearms. And that is to say that there were questions being raised about the proficiency of the men in weapon handling. With the issues of SARS and perceived rights abuse resolved, the Inspector General of Police was able to focus on the broader aspects of his police reform agenda. This is what informed the IGP's establishment of Operation Puff Adder, a highly disciplined anti-crime outfit of well-trained and motivated officers and men drawn from the Intelligence Response Team IRT, Special Tactical Squad STS, Police Mobile Force PMF, Counter-Terrorism Unit CTU, and the Special Anti-Robbery Squad SARS. The primary objective of Puff Adder was to curb the wave of violent crimes like armed banditry and kidnap for ransom. The multidisciplinary team was unveiled less than a month after President Buhari confirmed IGP Adamu's appointment as Substantive Inspector General of Police. The, the, the Council has um, approved the recommendation of uh, Adamu as the Inspector General of Police. So congratulations. IGP Adamu speaks on what inspired the formation of POF ADA. When we came on board, we knew what was happening in this country. Zamfara was an issue, Katina was an issue, uh, Kaduna was an issue, issue of Fama had us conflict, we had the issue of uh, um, kidnappers here and there. But we came with different strategy. Apart from the community policy I'm talking about, we came up with Operation Popada, targeted at kidnappers, targeted at bandits. The sources is, if you, if you go to Abuja Kaduna Road now, it's one of the safe, safest roads in this country. When we came on board, there were challenges there. Operation Povada have been able to clear uh, those bad guys that have been operating around uh, that area. The same thing with many uh, roads that were hit at all, been uh, problems. Uh, so Operation Povada is not only along Abuja Kaduna Road. It's in every part of the country where we have challenges, we created them there. In the southwestern part of the country where we, there was a period of time we had some security challenges that led to the killing of one lady, the daughter of a, a Fenifere leader. And um, we re-strategized and sent our special forces there and Operation Povada, and they sanitized the place. And after now, they're, they're there. From the inception of the Inspector General of Police, he came with full package program on how to turn the Nigerian police around, particularly in operational strategies, which he brought in. We came on board when the issue of this cattle lead, uh, banditry, you know, was on high. Immediately set up what they call Operation Puff Adder, you know, to counter this uh, menace. 
And you know, since Bofada was launched in Abuja, other state commands you know, do the same. Where some police officers were properly trained to move on patrols, to counter some of these uh, cattle rustlers, as well as uh, bandits, uh, which a lot of arrests were made. We also went uh, after the, the kidnappers on an own initiative, you know, brought in what we call air attack by, by mounting GPFG in our, in our helicopter to assist the ground troop. Operationally, operations can be carried out by the police in all the states of the federation simultaneously as crime and criminalities arise. What entails indirectly? is that you need funds. We need funds to pay the men the welfare, the feeding and all other things. And this we are not for coming. First, there's no provision in the budget to address these emerging challenges. Second, is that the is immediate directive that we should move in in compliance with government directives on the IPPS, and the fact that the police doesn't have an operational account for him to deploy instantly at the need makes it that these men are deployed and payments are made almost a month or two or three after when the needs have been done. So this man, he has to appeal to them, persuasion that they should remember that the service of the country. And they did their best and everybody went into the field and the resources he has, he has to ask the leadership what it was, the management that this is time to think it was and that all welfare in, at the management level should shoot down for operational reasons. We give glory to God that his astute management of resources, his, what I may call his uh, experience from, as a technocrat on global service, as uh, his experience in Interpol, did greatly enhance our operational capacity, motivation and intelligence. DIG Mohammed Katsina, who underscored the challenges at that time, captures the essence of Puff Ada. Let me give you an example of the situation on Abuja Kaduna Highway. Before the IG came on board, we all knew what was happening. But when we came, despite the poor city of fund and problem of even logistics, because he found that what we found out that policemen were forced to work in a situation where we, I can best call it a palpable operational inadequacies for you. But the question is how to get the gap breeze, which he did. Now he's, we sat down and he tasked us to, but with that enabling strategy that to help in taking care of this minas on the highway. That is why we have what we call Operation Pofada. It's an operation that is tilted towards understanding the peculiarity of the environment, the nature of crime, and their modus operandi. That ability to camouflage, ability to infiltrate, and ability to strike with precision. The Pofada one is a necessity, it's a big necessity and just coming as a strike force outside the normal duty of the mobile policemen. And the Povada is just to go in for any major emergency crisis, put it in order and go back. The Pov Ada template also suited a long-term comprehensive strategic instrument to curb violent crimes in the 36 states of the Federation. The need to embed it in the fight against insurgency in Borno State became apparent given its successes. When he came in, he has a roadmap as to how to police in the country. Part of the roadmap he puts as part of his policing policy is the Operation Pop Ada. Looking at the name itself, Operation Pop Ada is a dangerous snake and uh, tagging it with the situation on ground means readiness to fight whatever situation 
he met on the ground. Let me give an example. When His Excellency went to Baga with a man, there was, it wasn't a very mild, it was a very serious exchange. But because of the gallantness and the equipment provided to us by the current Inspector General of Police, it was, you could see the clip, it was really a wonderful situation, but we were able to contain it. As for the police under him, considerable development has been achieved in the area of security operations because I know the way and manner how police interact with civilians before and often now. And as a man of the people, he has concern to the police and the traditional institutions. He always encourages us uh, to be alive to our responsibilities. Within the last nearly two years, we have observed that the current IG has been reforming the police tremendously. So we are very grateful to the current leadership of the police. And I believe if the tempo is kept on going, uh, we would wish to see going back to, the, to under the police for our protection, for our internal security. They can fight Boko Haram. Soon after the elections, of course, we noticed a sudden spike in crimes, particularly um, kidnapping and banditry um, along Kaduna Abuja Expressway. Um, that access became almost impassable due to the activities of criminals. Zamfara was turning into a killing field. These are problems that the Inspector General of Police inherited. But he quickly um, came about with operational models. He formulated new strategies, thinking purely outside the box. And that led to the birth of um, Operation Porfada. With the launch of Operation Porfada, the force became more proactive rather than reactive. The force began to take the battle to the enemy's camp. We began to attack the kidnappers and the bandits right inside the forest. We deployed our air capacity to the fullest until we began to carry out um, operations on the Kaduna Abuja Expressway until we began to carry our major operations targeted at, um, at these bandits in Kajuru Forest and some of those axes. And these effective and offensive operations that we mounted against these bandits led to the decimation of, of a lot of these violent criminals. Today, Kaduna Abuja Expressway has become um, a very safe place for, for motorists and uh, other Nigerians to apply. Another thing which I've noticed and I've seen a change in the police force is, you know, acquiring of hardwares, things that you've not had in the recent past, equipment, a lot of things, you know, that you see all around. And it's not just at the federal level, you see that being replicated at the state and at all levels. Then also, I must give it to him, in the past, we left the fight against terrorism to the armed forces. And it's something that really gladdens my heart that we have an IGP who have now redefined or is trying to tell us what the role of the police should be, internal security. He is presently now at the forefront of the fight against terrorism. In the past, all I hear is the armed forces. But now, I see any trouble spot, any area where there is unrest, he goes there first, clear the way, send the squad there, and they do a very good job. This is purely leadership by example. In most cases, all these um, criminals do come from their hideouts. You know, carry out certain nefarious activities of theirs. They didn't know that we can actually engage them from above. Uh, what the raid we carried on them was a deliberate one and it was what we planned and targeted at them. We provided um, air surveillance and um, engaged the armed bandits too. 
and uh, we secured the release of some uh, kidnapped victims there. But most recently, the one we recorded has to do with the uh, attack that was launched in the Kududu forest, uh, Benengwari axis of uh, uh, Kaduna State, where the wing engaged the Ansaru terrorists. Two helicopters were involved in that um, exercise. One was attack helicopter and uh, a surveillance helicopter. The objective was uh, the attack helicopter will engage, will launch attack on the uh, bandits, you know, while the ground troops led by um, special forces team will do the mop up and the surveillance helicopter will over around them to provide air cover to prevent um, the men from build, being a butch. Since the launch of Operation Fourth Ada by our president IGP, there is a lot of successes that have been recorded. The kidnapping rate along Abuja Karuna Road has been brought down to BRS minimum because it used to be very high. Like sometimes at the peak of it, like three years ago, it was like eight, nine, ten kidnappings per day. But now, like one kidnapping in two months or so. The kidnap of Magaji Garindaura in Katsina State provided evidence of the sophistication and shocking new dimension which had been brought to kidnap incidents in the country. The new dimension involved hitherto unknown links between criminals in Nigeria and dangerous international terrorist groups. The Syracuse abductors understood that their victim hailed from the president's community. The Syracuse incident was to become a test case for IGP Adamu. DCP Abba Kiari takes us through the ordeal and subsequent victory. Magajin Garindora was kidnapped in the right town in his hometown in May last year. So he was kept for two months by the kidnappers. This kidnapping was perpetrated not by ordinary kidnappers. It was done by a terrorist group who are part of Boko Haram then, but they broke up from Boko Haram and formed form their own terrorist group, which is predominantly operating within the northwestern part of this country. They are responsible for kidnapping a lot of expatriates in Kasina, in Kano, in Kaduna, and some other neighboring states. We thank God that by and large, at the end of that operation, 13 of the terrorists were arrested alive. One of the terrorists was gone down. The victim was successfully rescued alive and a ransom of one Kobo was not paid. And behold, you know that the terrorists were insisting that 30 million dollars must be paid by the president or the presidency before Magajin Garindora would be released. So, but by the grace of God, he was rescued successfully and one dollar was not paid. And, and this group that has been terrorizing the Northwest for so many years, since they broke out from Boko Haram about seven, eight years ago, they have been terrorizing the Northwestern states. And they have not, never been arrested until now. So the whole of this, these guys were arrested, their arms recovered. So it was a very big, successful operation for the Nigerian police force. We thank our IG for giving us all the support because the IG has been on point with me while I was in Kano throughout the night up to the next day in the morning. Me and him have been brainstorming on at the final stages of the operation when we, we have over 200 armed men that surrounded the house. We have many armored personnel carriers and what have you. We are all aware of the millionaire kidnappers in Taraba, Alaji Ami Subala, A.K. Wadumu, even though there are some uh, operation casualties during the arrest, but we are able to tame him and get him arrested. I think it's not facing the justice in the court. Also of importance is the arrest of God's power, Amadi, a.k.a. Aja, and seven others operating in Imo and River State. They were responsible for a lot of kidnaps, including the chairman of Omagua community, and equally the local government of River State. We also have the arrest of five notorious gun runners, including the retired general. In our state. The Special Tactical Squad, Police Mobile Force, and Special Forces working independently and sometimes together 
were a key part of the successes recorded during their many operations all over Nigeria.